Hello and welcome back to our Irkutsk campaign as we continue our crusade to try to reform the Soviet Union. Uh, right now we are doing lessons from Sweden to see if we can get our last little bit of military reform from that. And we're going to go through and do some purges to see what happens there. And then we're going to do continuing course after that. And I think that might get us another focus tree. Not 100% sure though. But then we'll do the Great Purge. The Soviet Union cannot allow these revolts to ever occur again. If Russia is to ever rise from the ashes and show the Union is a stable entity, then our regional administration must not allow these rebels to ever rise up again against our government. We need to strike the source of the problem, the incompetence and corruption. The incompetent and corrupt. It's time for a purge. We must round up all those that are too incompetent to lead the administration, gather them up, fire them, imprison them, expel them from the party. For the especially corrupt, bring them to the back of the shed and shoot them like the sick dogs they are. We cannot have a civil union if the people are being represented by such incompetency. We're going to lose 10 war support, and that's going right into the negatives. Okay. Gory Gringark took a sip of his coffee. His eyes seem distant. It's interesting to me how far the Brits were willing to go for Sullivan's ideas. Is our policies really so terrible? It's not like they've changed much since Begarn's day, and no one was raising a fuss back then. Sergei Brzezinov and they got his foreign minister thought of what to say next. Every so often the two would meet in an unassuming little to discuss things that they would never speak of at the workplace, lest they draw the attention of the feared in KVD. This particular morning they found themselves in a sleepy cafe in the Irkutsk suburbs and the subject was dangerously close to becoming more controversial than usual. It was not seemed to care little. Do you think that maybe his promises held merit? Rinko immediately halted, raising his mug as he heard this, and looked to Brunov. What are you saying exactly? said, raising his eyebrow. His men are willing to lay down their lives for his ideas. Fought us too, so now we may not like it, but there had to be something worth looking at there. It just wouldn't make sense otherwise. Rinko assumed his drink. His posture is sucking once more. Eh, maybe. How do you know it wasn't all just talk, though? All you could have to say the right words and people die for you. Sabin's so obviously knew that well, and will never know if he was coming from a genuine place. Perhaps not. Who's to say we can't succeed where he failed? It would surely go a long way towards endearing us to the people. Ringo looked up his own again. Most of what Simone talked about with ideas of drivel, nothing more. The truth is, you can't run an effective government on dreams alone. Though sometimes, I think it might hurt to examine how we approach certain issues. We're not forward. It went it right. If only Common and Goethe could see that way. Perhaps we could figure something out. An interesting question for sure, but alas, nothing can come of it. We should forget this conversation, and nothing happened. <sighs> Increasing the party. I want that stability. I don't want the party to get stronger, though. Oh, that's by a large amount. No, it has to be state influence. It's unfortunate, but it has to happen. We'll go with with academic. Stability will take a hit, but we will go to increase our state popularity. Securing control to get weekly stability up anyway, so it's fine. of German Madagascar, all right. Looks like, let's see, someone who has one. Um, if we were to move our troops there, Here. Okay, there we go. I was being dumb. Why did I think this was my border? I don't know. P 
Peace the party fashion. Uh, faction, no thanks. It's up to 65%. We sued crisis. Fine. Economic wars. The men stood by his sail calmly and waited for their turn to jump. Tokyo Exchange Secretary. Out with a crash. Alright, cool. We can do the raid. Great purge done. So who do we want to do? We call suspicious personnel or assemble the commission. We'll do the negative one first, just to get out of the way. We have a lot of suspects noted by the NKVD for potential punishment, whether their track record are a lot more minor cases of simply sheer incompetence or more extreme cases of corruption. We'll need to remove them from the position for the necessary steps of the purge. However, while the people we are purging might have been competent at their job, or might have had trace of corruption, cannot just remove them from positions leave them in a people wide. These positions will need to be filled. Once they send temporary personnel to fill their shoes in the job, they cannot leave such a power gap or else we'll be civilizing the union further. Great purge. Comrade, you got it. You wish to speak with me. Vilbanova asked as he's attempting to go to his office. The door was pulled shut behind him, and the room was now silent. Save for the clock on your desk. Have a seat, comrade. Bulanov. Eric Yoda always had a way, had a humorless look about him, but there was something especially troubling about his mood at this time. Comrade Bruno, I'm sure, or Bruno, and whether this place was stated by administration, Bruno could only have guessed this was headed. Yes, Comrade, I have heard rumors. Let me just reveal how I really feel them. I'm absolutely livid, Lenov. Ever since we defeated the winds of Mary, Mary Band of Hairs, it was complained to them surrounded by corrupt buffoons who couldn't run an office to save their lives. Though Yoda did not raise his voice, his eyes betrayed a great anger. I see, have you tried scheduling a meeting? Perhaps you could. Speak some sense in him, comrade. You go to friend. I continue to bash my head against the wall. Come on, Lenov. I wouldn't have asked for my security chief if I can reason with these people. Go to them, push the folder across his desk towards Lenov. It is a dossier of troublemakers I've been getting for some time. I want the NKV to start a full investigation as soon as possible. Lenov knows a small piece of paper attached to the folder. Upon closer inspection, it is a list of names and instructions. And what is this for, comrade? You go to. Those are the people I want behind bars or in front of a firing squad by tomorrow morning. I don't want. My intention is to be misinterpreted by anyone. Comrade Bunov, our great union, is in for a wake-up call of a lifetime. Later that night, Pavel Bunov arrived alone at the KVD headquarters in Irkis. Only minutes later, a large column of trucks filled of the room with NKVD officers, which had come down under the cover of darkness and rolled into the city to inflict terror upon the enemies of the people. The Great Purge had begun. Oh, there goes our stability. Can these be changed easily? No. Let's go ahead and do the raid. They refuse tribute. The sounds of gunfire. Well, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to beat them. Just a lot of... Okay, I can get enough. Wait, right, let's see more... Okay, I'm getting close to having research speed max out as, as far as uh, current time. But let's get... Some construction speed for now. Ooh, we're gonna lose. How many divisions do you have? Five.
The raid fails. Wow, okay. Symbol the commission. It is crucial that we have an effective purge to remove the filth. In doing so, we need an effective commission that can do the work of collecting the information of the incompetent and corrupt officials and disposing of them through, a fit, through however means necessary. Absolutely well necessary. We must bring the people within the NKVD who are talented at handling and sorting through the evidence we find out about the corrupt administration and plotting how to deal with them. Depending on just how severe they might destroy the Union from the inside out. After all, After all, it would be impossible to commit to our purge without actual commission to handle the dirty work for the people of the Soviet Union. We cannot risk another rebellion. We set leisurely upon the tall red rock, an unbecoming sight for an NKVD officer. Perched upon an outcropping that emerged from the depths of Lake Pagali, he glanced towards, back towards his neatly folded clothes on the shore. A younger I would have been afraid to exhibit such luck favor on duty, but the few days changed him immensely. Peace had come over the aging murderer, a peace he refused to vacate. His eyes turned to the green waters before him, taking their time to meet the sun kissed rise and blow it. He saw the faint outlines of Nerpa seals, unique little fishermen who frequently found themselves pestered by birds. In many ways to the birds, he was like them a past. While the people of Irsup City attempted to carve out the lives in this Russian hell, or uh, while harassed them. In his head, set thousands of words, snippets of conversations between lovers, friends, families, all of them were stolen, private snapshots of lives acquired via surveillance. Upon his hands, there was much blood, young and old, idealist, cynic, patriot, and traitor, each of them met with us just at one time or another. That's quite the dramatic tone of his thoughts. What had made the Solomons any different? He regret he felt now, the one that seemed that, that had seemingly turned him into an aspiring poet was one who had experienced in decades. Still, it was a seal instead, a man ha haunted by his own pest, invisible to him for many years. A seal to a thousand lurking birds that had finally come home to roost. As he stood up from the rock and began his long swim to the shore, he made a decision I would not be turning to Irkutsk. All that had tied him to the place seemed shattered by whatever realizations like him to His duty was as faint as a snow cloud. So, what it was at the NKD when he made his duties and set off for the Siberian wastes. Alright, when well, we have no political power to actually do a raid. Alright. We were able to beat you last time, right? Oh, you're up at 6 now. We're gonna have to get more divisions. You'll have to be who I attack next. Just gotta wait for it. Losing all that political power really hurt. Guess we can't change these. That's unfortunate. Um, I guess we'll leave it for now. Don't mess up too much. Kevin for Lou. Symbol the commission. Alright, the investigations. While nobody can remain, the NKVD's 
grasp for long, it has become clear that some of the suspects we are closing in on are simply entrenched too deep to the pickle machine to be removed easily. Now that the commission has been assembled, we shall begin a wide series of investigations to get the evidence on those corrupt officials who foolishly assume they are untouchable. With luck, we'll find something concrete and continue to make arrests. Once we have enough material to start the crackdowns in earnest, however, the questions remain as to how to properly deal with the arrested officials with the evidence in hand. The commission will determine the severity of the suspect's crimes and therefore any severity of the punishment. For most of these parasites will no doubt be found to be enemies of the state and will now be purged for their idiotic crimes against the people. There may, may be some of those who are not too far gone and can be encouraged to wise the ears of the ways. Once the evidence has been gathered and reviewed, the final decision on whether or not to show clemency with minor offenders will ultimately rest in common. You go to end the NKVD. We will, of course, uh, due to what it does to our influence, give an opportunity for forgiveness. A purging would, all the way would help with our stability. And the party influence by a small amount. Well, we want the state small amount. Political power gain be better long term uh, than stability. so long until they're uh, we're able to do uh, one because we filled the raid. Don't know how long it actually lasts though. I'm starting to get some pretty big guys around us. Whoa, how do you have so much land but no troops? Nineteen civilian factories. I don't want to spend the political power on it. Spend expand the NKVD now. I'll save the political power for now. The investigations are obtaining forgiveness. There are certain groups of people within our reach that could be potentially used to our advantage in order to further establish our glorious republic. Their role in the prior administration was highly effective, but all that effectiveness ended up becoming at a price corruption. The opportunity for us is there to seize the major potential to gain us the return of those who had powerful projection of their skills in our government. If we were to utilize these people to our advantage, we would promise them redemption. They could regain their original position so we can cover their tracks. However, only the stern condition that they do not repeat their silly mistake once more. Into the files. For the past two weeks, the special NKVD commission has been meeting in their headquarters in Irkutz every day to lay the groundwork for investigating the more high-profile targets that we could as purchase. Files were examined, evidence was reviewed, and the men's very fates were to be decided upon. Those who were in the commission were... Gradable who's who of the NKVD's highest echelons. Among them was security chief Pavel Bunilov, and on this occasion, General Secretary Good himself. Now, comrades, that we are in the process of gathering enough evidence to arrest every man who has attained a Soviet political office in the past 10 years, there is the one question that we have yet to approach, and I figure now we'd be using guns anyway. Almost every man in this room looked to Bunilov in suspicion. Once these men are in custody, how do we propose to be dealt with? Much of Bunilov's dismay, the room was almost immediately fell into a deafening silence. Out of this relatively long, quiet intermix with nervous glances and coughs, is finally broken by a visit we tried to go to. You mean to tell me that you idiots have been meeting in this place for almost two goddamn weeks and we still haven't figured this out? What a joke. After further silence, only one officer had the courage to speak up. Now that you mention it, it does seem like a rather important detail to leave open. You go to only side and buried his face into his hands in response. When all attempted to alleviate the situation before you go to, man, began demanding names. Come on, you go to. If I may, how do you think the punishment should be dealt with? These investigations, after all, were your idea. Perhaps it would be best if you are the ones to decide. You go to lift his head to respond. We will show no mercy. These corrupt and competent parasites will be shot so that they may never have troubles again. As for those who are too, who are too useful to fill with the lead, I will decide in due time. For now, please do not make me do everything myself, comrades. With that, you get a left room. The rest, we're not far behind. Lose political power. Okay. Our administration. Let's see. What's that doing for us right now? 
50% power gain and stability completely gone. Okay. An ultimatum. We received an ultimatum from the Siberian Black Army. They're demanding that we hand over tribute or loot. Or else they will raid us and take everything from us. We are impasse to the side. We've started to engage in confrontation with the Siberian Army, possibly taking our men dying at the hands of their enemies. Or do we instead stand down and cave into their bands, giving them a desired loot, allowing their men to fight them another day? We'll not back down so easily. Siberian Black Army. Slow. I'm probably just going to lose immediately because we can't get our troops over in time. That's frustrating. You know what? Since we're probably going to lose some political power, we're going to invest in uh, infrastructure while we can. How strong are you guys? Six to eight. We have been late rated. We lose one. Food stolen. Lose stability, lose manpower, lose political power. And we actually probably did lose that infrastructure, didn't we? No, we did not. Okay. Ultimatum. This is very frustrating. Opportunity for forgiveness, the Irkut's trials. Oh, there's literally no fix for that. Okay. Garrison slaughtered. This is stupid. So we can't even move our troops. Ugh, that's stupid. And we lose all of our loot. there. Okay. Continuing course. The safety of our union was threatened by the revolt of the sub -nights. However, their fall comes a new opportunity to strike out into our former territory. This time has come once again to set our eyes upon the motherland. We soon will bring the light of the socialist revolutionary power to the proletariat. Once the East is secured with our righteous fervor, and might, we shall move deeper and deeper into our lost heartland and drive the traitors who abandon the Union back, either into retreat or into the ground. With the spirited guidance of the legitimate leader of the Union, Comrade Goodhart, our failure 
and the brutal conflicts to come is near impossibility. The rise of the Union of so Soviet Socialist Republics will once again let us stand alone in the shining beacon in their darkness of our world. Trials, right? The defendants admit to the crimes of treason, espionage, wrecking terrorism, homicide, rape, arson, public indecency, and anti-Soviet activity. The prosecutor aggressively listed off increasing absurd accusation. One could practically see what little hope better remain in the accused leaving their very bodies. What were once some of the highest-ranking bureaucrats in Irkutsk were now just figures standing before what would become one of the most infamous trials in the town's entire history. The sad condemned men of me. I lost given meek not a response to the accusations. He had little strength up in the entries of scene The court hereby finds the accused guilty of all charges and sends them to the supreme penalty of execution by firing squad. Misers read some and immediately collapsed to the floor and lost their nerve, while others remained standing in cold acceptance of their fate. No time at all. A group of NKVD soldiers entered and began to violently pull the condemned men out of the ad hoc courtroom and further into the depths of the NKVD headquarters. As they were led through the cut Claustrophobic basement, halls again, shots of panic, yelling could be heard all around them. Poor souls who came before them, being served their penalties from the barrel of a gun. Some of the prisoners in the group who are still in a state of despair were being dragged by their shirt collars against the ground, kicking and screaming as they went. If these men were going to hell, this place already made it look childish in comparison. Eventually, the group went into an unscripted concrete room with no windows and only a single dangling light. Some of the prisoners had pictured many places as being their final resting spot, but this glorified bathroom. Stall was probably the last place they would have expected. The NKVD soldiers ordered the prisoners against the wall, forcibly shoved those who were too sick to move. Soon enough, everyone was lined up. Letters of pardon. I don't see if there's any way to get party popularity up. Stability would not be fun. Not letters of pardon. It's gonna hurt the party popularity. Maybe I'm just crazy, but... Okay, yeah, I'm just crazy. I was thinking maybe I... I'll also read this before I pick a new research. Scene was dreadfully familiar to Miss Narcrizel. The distant thumping of artillery, the mud and dirt, the wide-eyed, terrified young souls looking to their common self for guidance. The only notable difference here is that Krugov was the one being relied on. It was just... I was just like you once, comrade, shaking my boots and wondering if I would live to see tomorrow. I was there... When the fascist bastards invaded our motherland, and I was there when we almost sent them crawling back to their holes. I have seen what cruelty these fascists are capable of in victory, and I made a promise to myself to never allow such conditions to ever happen again. Komensar got up and stood over the men. He could feel the orator inside him taking over. This is not just a war against those who have betrayed the people, but a war against a pulse of the dark clouds of fascism that looms over everything we will dear. It is not wrong to fear, feel fear, but it is wrong to allow your fear to shape you. Think of your friends, your homes, your loved ones. Would you stand by as these fascist dogs march in to oppose their murderers all over them? Comrades, put your fear behind you and fill your hearts with rage. Build this anger within you and use it well when the time comes to send these murdering fascist bastards to an early grave. Kukov's short seat is punctured by fierce passionate cheers from the men. For once, the comments are could see a fire burning in their eyes. Each only wondered how many of them would still be alive after today. Not one step back. And like encryption, decryption to work on. All right. And Hitler has died. Cool.
Alright, cool. So... The German Civil War... Yeah, our political power is horrible. Not surprising. Probably should have just let them win, but you know. Uh, maybe we don't get a new focus tree. Okay. Ancient Africa. Okay, we do get a new focus tree. Alright. Yung Yagoda has been spending the evening as he usually did, meticulously going over mountain reports and dossiers that had accumulated in his office that day. On this occasion, however, the task was not as soul grinding as usual. For each report pen and small fragments of a much larger ultimate picture. All of Yagoda's plans and hard work were finally coming together. One report stated clearly, a lingering satellite influence and errors had seemingly dissipated for good. It seems that all of the investigation purges had borne fruit after all. Not even Yagoda couldn't help but feel remnants of anger and betrayal when he thought about the foolish exploits of the mutineers and how their brazen defiance of the Union caused him so much trouble. At least now we can take comfort in the fact that they were never troubled again. Out of some time, he finally got to the real meat of the evening's readings. Red Army reports on combat readiness. What he saw so the more promising. Only the High Command reports that the military was close to recovering all manpower lost during the mutiny, but also that the subsequent organizational reforms were going through without issue. The intermix were various updates on the activities of Spanish efforts in neighboring warlord states, and they all come down with roughly the same conclusion. The fascist forces were hopelessly unable to match the Red Army in pitched battle. Once the proper plans of attack had been drawn up, Yagoda anticipated that the coming wars would be merged shortly as the activities reports were accurate. Putting a cigarette, Yoda leaned back in his chair and began to think about the future. It was obvious that that the war for the interior was coming to a close, and at this point onward, his efforts would be solely be focused on reclaiming whatever was wrestled away from the Soviet Union circus hours. The uphill struggle to take back what was lost would soon begin, and the world would never be the same. Got a new one. We got restoring our hold. Restoration of the Far East of our Union is paramount before we set our eyes westward to our beloved heartland. The East lie the hands of the reactionaries and fascists. These are the people who idolize Russia of old before the revolution. These people are. Sorry, sorry. Before the revolution, these people are, who idolize the very system that brought our proud union to its knees. This indignity cannot be allowed to stand. Through iron and fire, we will always show them we are strong, that we have always been strong. From here, come out our beloved socialist ideals will cause the hearts of the proletariat so long to suppress by fascists or the false czar to Zor for the first time in years. This end, the soldiers of the union return to the men of iron. Their weapons must become the instruments of the revolutionary fire. But that, there's some stuff we can do. Oop, so we can uh, negotiate, or we can attack, prepare for struggle. Oh, so we go piece by piece. So it's kind of more on rails. All right. I'm looking forward to that, but for now, uh, we actually have ran out of time. Uh, please leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one.